It is said being the queen is a privilege. The lifestyle, travel, the luxuries, everything is paid for by the taxpayer. Your job is to smile and wave, they say. But for Queen Elizabeth II, that was not always the case. She inherited the throne in 1952. By then, the sun had set on the British Empire. Their economy was crippled by World War II. Their colonies were declaring independence one by one. And the world no longer revolved around Britain. That wasn't the case for other queens. Most historians talk about the big three. Queen Elizabeth I, Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth II. Put together, they reign for around 178 years. Let's discuss the first two queens. Elizabeth I ruled over a golden era in Britain. Back then, monarchy was the norm. During her rule, English literature flourished. The likes of William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe shot to fame. It was also the age of seafaring. Maritime legends like Francis Drake expanded Britain's naval prowess. So the first Elizabethan age was a success story. Same with Queen Victoria. She reigned for almost 63 years. During this period, Britain attained superpower status. The Industrial Revolution gathered momentum. The empire expanded. How does the second Elizabethan age compare to that? Remember, she was the longest reigning monarch in British history. She was on the throne for 70 years. So the longevity by itself is a legacy. But that is not her biggest contribution. The Queen's biggest contribution was making the monarchy acceptable. Perhaps even relevant. Let me give you two reasons why. Number one, the era that she reigned in, the 20th century, saw two world wars and multiple freedom movements. The colonies broke free. Human rights movements were gathering steam. Democracy was the catchphrase everywhere. And in that context, monarchies were like dinosaurs. They should have been wiped out by the march of time. In fact, in many places, that is exactly what happened. Portugal, Germany, Italy, Bulgaria, Greece, Romania, Russia, Turkey. All these countries abandoned their monarchy in the 20th century. Not all of them replaced it with a better system, but nonetheless, the era of blue blood was over. Not the case with Britain. Even after World War II, they persisted with the monarchy. A lot of credit for that goes to Queen Elizabeth II. She was loved and respected all over the world. People accepted her as a titular head in the era of democracy. And that in itself is a huge achievement. Reason number two, the ugly history of the British Empire. Today, we know the royals as soft power props, but their ancestors did some horrible stuff. Slavery, forced labor, discrimination, massacres, all of this was a staple of the British crown. Yet, the monarchy was loved around the world. Even former colonies enjoyed great relations with the royal family. Why? Again, because of Queen Elizabeth II. She sort of baptized her family's past. She made the world see the monarchy from a new perspective. Not as powerful tyrants for privileged aristocracy, but as a non-controversial figurehead. We can debate why she did that. Was it a genuine effort to reform an outdated system or was it to protect her privileges and wealth? I guess we'll never know. But here's what we can say for sure. The Queen gave the world a template for constitutional monarchies. She retained the crown's mystical air and at the same time she convinced the world of her relevance. And that is not easy to do. British citizens say the Queen is a symbol of national unity and strength. Perhaps her predecessors were, but Queen Elizabeth II presided over a weakening union. Under her, Britain lost the status of superpower. Under her, Britain left the European Union. Under her, Scotland held an independence referendum. I guess you could look at it in two ways. One, the Queen held the country together despite these setbacks? Or two, 
all these setbacks happened during her reign. Whichever way you look at it, Queen Elizabeth II's legacy looms large over global politics. She was a giant of the 20th century. And reluctantly or not, she dragged a medieval institution into 2022. Because let's face it, monarchies don't belong in the 21st century. But the Queen convinced the world to not just accept it, but celebrate it. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.